Teachers are threatening to, to walk out of schools unless uh, demands are met, which include a $10,000 pay raise, $5,000 pay raise for school support staff, $200 million in education funding, a pay raise for state employees, uh, health care funding. I mean, it's over $800 million this year, eventually $1.4 billion in new spending that they are saying they want or, or they're going to walk out in April 2. By the passage of these different measures that we pass uh, this week, we will now be able to be second in the region in teacher pay, give our teachers, uh, beginning teachers, a little bit over a $6,100 pay increase. This week the legislature passed you know, pretty historic when you think about the, the political landscape, a uh, series of tax increases um, that would fund a $6,000 teacher pay raise. It would increase public school funding in terms of just a general funding by about $18 million, so well short of the $200 million in public school funding that the OEA was asking for. I think Monday's walkout is really about making them fix that hole so that they're keeping their promise they made just 24 hours ago, but also saying we can do more for our students. This was never just about teacher pay, and they've left money on the table. And today, we're here to say enough is enough. For two weeks in April, tens of thousands of educators and their supporters filled the state capitol grounds as a teacher walkout shut down schools and lawmakers were confronted with an embattled education community that was demanding change. Teachers want a pay raise and some additional school funding, but many left feeling there was still unfinished business. Today, those teachers are back in their home districts, preparing for a new school year, which will be the first since the walkout. The historic demonstration promises to impact a generation of students, and many believe it made some things better for local schools. But the walkout also put a spotlight on challenges that remain in schools across the state. It changed the role of teachers and sent a jolt through Oklahoma's political landscape. The walkout came about after years of teacher frustration. Teacher pay raises had been attempted on state ballots and in the legislature to no avail. Rallies had been held at the Capitol and teachers had run for office. After years of feeling ignored, Oklahoma educators walked off the job and gathered at the state capitol. We had been working so hard getting community and parents to understand the funding issues for schools the last couple of years. Um, and then we had a great coalition of partners that were standing uh, with us, um, telling why we needed funding for education. And so um, it, it was really a whirlwind. Uh, I think that... Uh, that we knew that we were going to have to take some sort of a job action. Um, we just didn't know how big it would be at the time. One of the key elements to the Oklahoma walkout was the support teachers received from school boards and school administrators. Many school boards voted to close school during the walkout, which allowed teachers to rally without risking their jobs or jeopardizing attendance records. We support all measures taken by our classroom teachers to demand the necessary funding for a meaningful teacher pay raise and education funding. We had been working really well with, um, with local superintendents and local school board uh, leaders. Nobody knows better than a superintendent what the funding cuts have done to their school system. And so, um, and so we would all be working uh, on the same side of that rope on a, a tug of war to try and get funding for our, for our students. And so we were always hopeful uh, that as many would sign on to, uh, to the resolution uh, to support and to let school out. And then when the numbers came in that it was about 75% of, uh, of our student population and our teacher population, um, that, that's overwhelming support that we know that we're all on the same side. Our state leaders have to act because our kids deserve better than what they have been getting. You know, the state has cut education funding by 28% in the last decade, and it is starving the schools of being able to keep great teachers in the classroom. For two weeks, tens of thousands of teachers pressed state lawmakers to significantly increase state funding for public schools. The legislature approved a few small measures, but never the type of increase educators were seeking. For many teachers, the walkout left them more discouraged than before. Are you more optimistic no, being here today? I feel today? more frustrated today than I have felt sitting at home. Because now I'm hearing them, I'm reading it online, and I'm following it online, I'm doing my research, and then they're blaming somebody else. They're looking for that scapegoat. I've seen through 
throughout these years how a lack of funding has affected our public education system. Two years ago, we had our programs consolidated. Pre-K was removed, autism was removed to no fault of the district of their own, simply for a lack of funding. While teachers made up the bulk of demonstrators here at the Capitol, there were also plenty of students that were here to tell lawmakers that they had felt shortchanged by an era of budget cuts and dwindling classroom resources. Growing up in Oklahoma public education, we thought it was normal to have textbooks without covers. AP U.S. history books that stop at Ronald Reagan and do not include the Murrah Building bombing. It is the time to be engaged directly with our legislators because those are the people that you need to be calling and emailing and coming up here to talk to in person. At the heart of schools, after all, is students. So it begs the question, what was the impact on students after the two-week walkout? To try and answer that question, we traveled 80 miles away from the state capitol to Lawton, Oklahoma to try to determine how the two-week walkout will impact incoming pre-K students who represent the class of 2032. Happy first day of school! Happy first day of school! <laughs> so this is the class of 2032. How would you answer the question of how, how well is Oklahoma right now, its school system, at, at preparing this new generation of students for, <laughs> you know, for what life will be like, you know, in, you know, 2032? Honestly, I don't think we're very prepared for that. I mean, I know that that they did a little for us as far as funding, but we're not to the point where we're prepared for the future, you know. I do know that my teachers from, you know, there's a difference I saw at the beginning of this year from where we were at the end of last year before the walkout, I would say. Um, I saw a renewed hope in my teachers this year. And last year before the walkout, there was you know, there was a feeling of Oklahoma doesn't care about us. So they're excited for the future. And so I can't tell you what the future is gonna hold. I can't say that Oklahoma is gonna move forward with education. It depends kind of on who our governor is gonna be. But I'm, I'm hopeful and I know my teachers are hopeful because what they did for us last year kind of brings about hope for all teachers and hope for education. What do you feel like as a state? I mean, are we, you know, do you feel like Oklahoma is is focused on creating an education system that you know works for students or you get what you pay for so if you want a, a car that's going to get you from a to b and that's it you, you get a cheap car we're trying to get teachers on a bargain right now and pay them the cheapest amount that we can so what you're going to get is the people who either are just in this because they love kids and they're going to do it regardless of how much you pay them or are you going to get the people who are just trying to get from a to b at the end of the day we owe our kids more than that much more than that um, me and her, we've discussed homeschooling plenty of times. Um, the key, this school is wonderful. The instructors here are great. Going forward, I don't know how long we will stay with the school system just because of the fact that if the state and the government isn't willing to put forth the effort to better our kids, I'd much rather we put forth for ourselves. They, 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 I feel as if they do the best they can. Like they, they already have a lot of pressure on them for one. And then for two, they have to teach a certain curriculum and everything. And I trust them with my kids because of the simple fact is they're here to teach our kids stuff that is basically the same stuff that we learned in school. And it's being passed on to the next generation. So I personally believe they're doing a great job, regardless of what happened last year. Yes. And I'm going to continue to support them. Where does the where where should we be looking if we if we want to continue to grow the school system, particularly as we're talking about like elementary age kids? I mean, what do they need over the next several years? Absolutely. Um, well, the world of work that you and I were prepared for is not the same world of work that we need to be preparing this current generation for. And so, in Lawton Public Schools, one of our big focuses is to ensure that when we graduate these students, we graduate them with the skills and experiences that they need to be successful. And so, whether that be, um, you know, college experience, career tech experience, um, work experience, but we want to make sure that they have the things that they need to be successful beyond. What's, what was, what's been the impact for your teachers? And we talked to some who said, you know, they feel like they've kind of come back with, um, you know, maybe a renewed sense of hope and inspiration after what happened. I mean, what's, what are you hearing from teachers this year? Uh, without a doubt, I think the teachers feel affirmed. I think they feel valued. I know our community rallied around them. 
and, and they feel like the state did. Um, they're appreciative of the legislators. They understand that it was a tough time during the walkout, but I do believe to a person, our, our teachers, our support staff, they all appreciate what the legislature has done. What does Oklahoma need to be doing to make sure that you know these kids that are coming into pre-K this year and going to be graduating in 14 years, that they are prepared for that next level? I think um, if we think about the fact that none of us owned a smartphone 10 years ago. I got my first smartphone six years ago. Um, and these students are growing up with, with technology exponentially expanding and increasing in power and usefulness every year. We can't really even fathom what 2033 will look like. So preparing our students to be discerning, to be um, good users of technology, but also to be able to, to vet information accurately because they, it used to be Nobody had all the answers, but now everybody has all the answers. So how do we teach our students to be discerning um, um, consumers of information as they have every piece of information imaginable at their fingertips? So the next generation, we can't even imagine what they will be doing or how they'll be doing it. What, what part does the state need to play you know, in terms of making sure that schools are equipped with the latest technology, preparing these students for whatever the future may hold? The, the number one thing, Technology, um, funding, all these things are so important from the state, but the number one thing I would request from the state is stability and predictability. In the last 10 years have been such full of turmoil with new curriculum standards and be brought in and be thrown away, and, and we just need stability in order to have some stability, but we cannot adapt to constant confusion. And so give us some stability, give our schools and our public educators a high bar step back and give us a chance to reach it and we will not disappoint you. The April walkout not only pushed education to the forefront, but also the teaching profession. Teachers voiced their concerns, frustrations, and struggles, urging lawmakers to make up for the 9% decline in state spending over the past decade. Incoming educators were also at the Capitol, fighting to make changes for their future classrooms. It made me excited. I mean, this is a huge time to be a teacher. There's a big turnaround, you know, we're getting, um, I would say kind of like our names out there. We're putting our um, profession on the front of people's minds and making big changes. So, I mean, I'm amped up, I'm excited. I'm ready for the changes. Harley Reed is an education major from the University of Central Oklahoma, who is working as a student teacher during her final semester. Reed is one of around 54,000 Oklahoma college students who are preparing to become teachers, a number that has declined in recent years. Officials say the decline in education students is due to several factors, including negative perceptions about the work conditions and the field's pay. Many teachers have left Oklahoma for positions in neighboring states because of better pay. A $6,100 pay increase was approved by the state legislature this year, and the State Department of Education said it gives Oklahoma the second highest pay in the region behind Texas. State Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister says the walkout was more than just a two-week event. She hopes the momentum for change continues. It was more of the long view, and uh, a long view in reverse, uh, knowing what we've gone through, what families have endured because of a um, depleted resource or thinning resources, but also a long view in the future, knowing that it can't just be about one year. This has to be the first step in a continued investment if we are going to be competitive. For the next generation of teachers, the walkout increased their optimism about the future of their profession and education in Oklahoma. I think that is definitely on the upswing. Um, like I said before, this is an exciting time for an upcoming teacher because they're all, it, it was stagnant for a really long time and a lot of people just kind of put it on the back burner and didn't think about it. But now teachers are stepping forward and we're like, we are here and we want change and it's happening. And so I think it's definitely on the upswing because a lot of people are starting to think about it when I feel like it's an easy thing just to put on the back burner and forget about. It's true that the walkout was about schools about teachers, about students, about classrooms, but it was also about politics. With tens of thousands of teachers at the Capitol for two weeks, it represented one of the largest lobbying efforts in the state's history. Teachers were here demanding change, and they were demanding specific votes. The fact that the walkout took place during an election year and during the three-day candidate filing window ensured that education would be a topic in nearly every race across the state. It also seems likely that this walkout will have an impact on the November election quite possibly changing the makeup of the state legislature. This is a movement of our teachers, of our students, of our parents. It has nothing to do with partisan ideology in its um, origin. 
Like I said to you the other day, I do think that the outcomes may end up being partisan because Republicans are in power. They have been in power for nearly a decade, and they are solely responsible for not just our education crisis, but our budget crisis overall. And our teachers have had the opportunity the last couple of weeks to see that firsthand as they've come to the Capitol and spoken with their legislators and seen the kind of leadership that's been here. Yeah, there, there will be a reckoning for uh, several lawmakers uh, who are going to, uh, to go up against these uh, even more anti tax than they are conservatives in the June elections. Uh, there's no doubt about it, and the, the, they're also going to have to, uh, uh, to to face any challenge from the from the left if they manage to make it through to November. The question is turnout. I mean, I think does this spur a lot of turnout in the primaries on the right, especially, or in the general election on the left, especially. That's where I don't know to what extent you know. Getting people registered to vote has been happening the last couple weeks. And things like that really shift long-term election. Here in the basement of the Oklahoma Capitol, teachers are outside. Candidates are lining up to file for office just around the corner. And one of the big questions is how many teachers are we going to see come inside and run for office? You may recall that in 2016 there was a, the so-called Teachers Caucus. Nearly 30 educators ran for office to try to put a spotlight on public education. We've already talked to a few teachers that have already signed up and said that they're going to run for office. They're going to try to put uh, members in the House and the Senate that actually say what they are, do what they mean when they say that it's time to invest in Oklahoma's public schools. The reason that I decided to run was the fact that they have not funded education. I feel like there's a really big disconnect between what's happening and what people here know about. I feel like you know we've got lawmakers, uh, some good lawmakers in the House and in the Senate, and I, I feel like we now need dis difference makers. With the walkout rally taking place outside and inside the Capitol, it was here in this basement hallway of the state Capitol where more than 70 educators filed for state House and Senate seats. You know, I'd been going to the board meetings for Oklahoma City, like seeing what was happening, going, listening to the Mary Fallon, oh, here's more cuts, what are we going to do? And then Oklahoma City and having to be reactive to that. And Sarah Carnes taught in Oklahoma City Public Schools for several years, and she is currently teaching in Mustang Public Schools. Carnes says she thought about running for office before, but the walkout was the incentive she needed to make it a reality. I think that this was a big soapbox for us, and it still is. I think that um, we've had eight to ten years of not being funded, and who suffers more? Our kids? Our economy, our elder, I mean, everybody suffers. The art teacher believes she and other educators can draw on their skill set to get things done in the legislature. I think teachers have, and I say this about myself, I've been representing students, parents, community values. We have compassionate hearts. We have, um, we know how to work long hours. We um, know how to be good negotiators because we negotiate in the classroom all of the time. Like, um, please, can you do this assignment so I can grade it? Please, can you just read one more book? I think that having educators there in a majority, maybe we can get some things accomplished as a group of different mindset of individuals. The walkout is ending today and we're going back to school. We are not just giving up and going home. While most teachers expressed disappointment with the way the walkout ended, the coming elections offered a natural outlet for the advocacy energy that remained within educators. While this year's teacher walkout produced a salary increase and pumped some additional money into the education budget, Oklahoma's political landscape was also transformed and the makeup of the state legislature could be significantly altered come November.